Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise, this is um, kind of a unique exercise dealing with relative location. Uh, and we're going to take advantage of this empirical rule to analyze differences, uh, in this case, in two labor markets. So here's our problem. You graduate from college. You're looking at where do you want to go to work. You have information on, on salaries of employees with five years of experience. So in Region A, after five years, the average salary is 66300 with a standard deviation of 4000 And in Region B, the average is $69,000 with a standard deviation of 7000 Both regions have a starting salary of $55,000. So where do you want to work? Well, how can we use this empirical rule to analyze a little bit more, better understand uh, these labor markets. So the empirical rule is it's relatively straightforward. What it means is that 68% uh, of the values in that particular data set, if we have, here's our sample, 68% of observations are one standard deviation uh, from that mean. So that would correspond then to a z-score of 1. So there's a z-score of negative 1, and there's a z-score of, uh, sorry, negative 1 and 1. So that's one standard deviation on either side of the mean. 68% uh, of, of observations would be there. 95%, 95% of the observations are within two standard deviations. So z equals 2 and z equals negative 2. So now that we have information on our average and we have information on standard deviations, we can calculate after five years of, exp uh, of experience what's the general range of, of salaries that I might expect to earn. So let's just plug in some numbers here and see what we come up with. So let's begin region A. So in region A, so here's our distribution. Let's say let's say I'm just looking at the range. So it goes from from the lowest point to the maximum and here's our average. This is $66,300. So after five years of experience, 66, sorry, 68%, so here's 68%, are going to be within one standard deviation of the mean. So here's that standard deviation for region A is $4,000. So the upper limit would be 66,300 plus one standard deviation, 4,000. So 70,300. And a lower limit, 66,300 minus 4,000. So 62,300. So after five years, with a starting salary of $55,000, after five years, let's say a little bit more than two-thirds uh, of those with five years experience are in this region, this range, 62.3 to 73. 95, now if we go to the 95%, 95% will be within two standard deviations. So now that's going to be my mean, which is 66,300 plus two standard deviations, which is $4,000. So that's 74,300. $74,300. And at the bottom end, 66,300 minus two times 4,000, 58,300. So in region A, now I have some understanding of after five years of experience, what are people earning? Some people really haven't 
gained much. They're still earning pretty close to their to the current starting salary. Other people are earning uh, almost twenty thousand dollars more than the starting salary. If we look at region B, and let's go through that same exercise. So here's the range. We have an average of sixty-nine thousand. So within five years, sixty-eight percent are earning one standard deviation from the mean. A standard deviation now is $7,000, 69 plus $7,000, whoops, 69,000 plus 7,000. So there's $76,000, and less 7,000, that'll be $62,000 and 95%. Now if we look at two standard deviations, so 69,000 plus 2 times 7,000, so as much as 83, and as little as Fifty-five. After five years of experience, some people are still earning exactly the same amount of money. So there now we've got a little bit more information upon which to base our decision. Do I want to go into region B and risk really not making any progress whatsoever in terms of my earnings? but there's the potential of earning significantly more than that maximum amount uh, in region A, maximum of that 95% of the people with five years experience. So applying this empirical rule, even though I am starting with relatively little information, I've got averages and I've got some understanding of the variation, in this case a standard deviation of both of these different distributions, now I've got more information about the, the spread or the dispersion of salaries uh, and now based on my own feelings, in this case towards uh, my own feelings towards risk, maybe I'll want to risk uh, not making any gains for the possibility that I'll make you know, some significant gains, almost $30,000 more over five years. So using this empirical rule just gives us more information about the nature of a distribution that might help with some decision-making process. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Thanks.